up to do at this opening meeting, we were no fashion of the United Nations Disarmament Subcommittee. And in the name of Her Majesty's Government in the United Kingdom, I welcome the distinguished representatives of Canada, France, the Soviet Union, and the United States who have come to attend these meetings. The preamble to the Charter of the United Nations enjoins us to do everything in our power to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war which twice in our lifetime has brought untold misery and sorrow to, the, to mankind. And therefore the furtherance of peace is the primary impulse behind our efforts to achieve disarmament. However, under modern conditions, there are additional reasons, because the cost of modern armament imposes an almost intolerable burden upon all states. And some of the modern weapons themselves are sufficiently dangerous for us to desire fervently to establish a system under which they never will be made. And I am sure the all of us have also in mind the possibilities for the human race if the resources of men, money and materials now devoted to elements could be diverted to more constructive tasks. Now all this, I think you will agree with me, represents the hopes of the peoples throughout the whole world. However, we have to face the fact that it is easier to state these principles in general terms than to work out the detailed arrangements which alone will make possible their achievement. And this subcommittee first met in London in 1954. Since then it has continued to meet here and elsewhere. As a result of its labors, I think we can with truth say that there has been a certain narrowing of the differences between us. Yet we have frankly to face the fact that the progress which has been made is small compared with what needs to be done. I hope, therefore, I'm sure, I hope shared by all, that the new session of the subcommittee will make headway in solving its problems. Uh, I don't think that it is the time for lengthy discussions in the abstract of rival plans. Uh, we are not engaged upon a propaganda exercise or upon the sterile restatement of historic national attitudes towards disarmament. The world wants to see evidence of practical progress. And we hope, therefore, that we shall get on with the job of achieving some practical agreements likely to be honoured in the spirit and the letter, and such that confidence will grow between nations, and the day may come nearer when the shadow of war will in truth be lifted from the world. And as we pursue our deliberations, I think we will always bear in mind that there are tens of millions of people 